continuous soybeans, Darren. Who's going to do continuous soybeans? Well, why not, Ryan? Why, why would you not? You never know. I mean, here's corn here's, pays too good. Wheat <laughs> pays too good. Why would I do continuous soybeans? Well, for some farmers, you know, soybeans are the best fit. And you know what? You end up with a lot of different situations. Maybe you have a split field. It was half corn, half soybeans last year, and you want to get it all into one yep. crop. And soybeans work out for you. Maybe it's just a thing where, you know what? I'm not planning on continuous soybeans, but guess what? It flooded. And now it's late, and now I have to plant soybeans. Well, even again. even without flooding, it just keeps raining and raining, and then it gets to middle of May, and you say, ah, I just don't know if I want to put corn in anymore. So there do end up to be some situations where we see continuous soybeans raised in the United States, and that's why we think it's important to at least be talking about it. So what would you say are the top two or three most important things that a farmer needs to know? Okay, let's start with the seed. When you're planting seed in continuous soybeans, you have to be cautious about what kind of disease package that soybean variety has. For example, brown stem rot, much more common in a continuous soybean field than when you're going into corn or wheat stubble. Also, sclerotinia, white mold. If you have a white mold problem in the history of this field, now you're putting soybeans out there again, hey, you're just at more risk of having problems. So start with a good seed variety, then use a good seed treatment. When you think about a good fungicide- well, Yeah, but Darren, you forgot one of the most important things here, soybean cyst nematode. If you just raise soybeans, you might have tremendously high levels of soybean cyst nematode. There are fortunately varieties out there that show some good resistance. But the other thing is you want to have good overall plant health. So cyst nematode doesn't hurt that much even if you do have some. Well, now let's talk about seed treatment. When we talk about the fungicide package you're going to use, that's important. You should use Pancho Votivo as well. When you're planting soybeans on yeah, soybean ground from last year, I... get a little bit more help. Plus, you've got that higher rate of Pancho in there rather than the 250 well, the... rate. Now you're at the 500 rate. Yeah, that's the good higher... for the bugs too. Yeah, the higher rate would be nice. But I mean, let's be honest. On the Votivo thing, we're only seeing, on average, a one bushel gain. That's okay, so everywhere. Yes. When you know you've got a problem and continuous yes soybeans are one of those spots where, hey, my nematode numbers have really flared up because I just had soybeans there last year. They're seeing bigger gains, like two, three, right. maybe even five bushels, depending on you know the hot spots in your field. Yep, so make sure you pick the right variety, but then also look at that type of seed treatment. Okay, let's talk about foliar diseases. You mentioned white mold. What can I do to stop white mold foliar? Well, if you could have gotten some catans on last fall, that would be a nice start. That's something you'd put soil applied, and it helps break down those sclerotia that are out in the field. But let's Let's say that you didn't and you're just going into this, hey, I'm planting the seed, now what can I do? I like Domark fungicide. You could do a couple different shots of low rates of proline. Either way, you're going to do a nice job suppressing the white mold, but you have to be aggressive and be out there in front. So you'd start with an R1 or first bloom application because where the white mold's going to get into the plants is when those blooms start to dry up, that's where white mold moves in. So use R1 and R3 as your timing. So first bloom and first pod. That's the two times that you should spray for white mold. Now, if you're only gonna do it once, I'd probably target R2. That'd be my spot, but you're gonna do a better job if you go R1 and R3. Okay, the other thing you could do is use Cobra herbicide, and I know Valent likes to say, well, Cobra has fungicidal properties. I kind of look at it as, well, we're dropping some leaves off, we're kind of thinning the plants out, and then air can move through there. So don't think that Cobra is going to hurt your yield. It actually will help your yield in a lot of cases, because it does seem like we have less white mold problem when Cobra is used. Oh, and the other thing too, it can help control some late season weeds. Absolutely. So you got a few weeds that yep. are popping through, hey, why not do it? You get the weeds and you get some help on work. Okay, here's what I think could be the biggest issue for you on your farm. Most farmers, unfortunately, don't fertilize their soybeans. We no. always fertilize our soybeans, always. If you're gonna raise a great crop, why would you not wanna feed the crop? I don't understand that. So if you think that, well, I'm only gonna put fertilizer on corn and then that's gonna carry over to soybeans, you know what, if you're raising continuous soybeans, you're not going to have any carryover fertilizer and maybe quite frankly you didn't when you're raising the corn anyway but all i'm trying to tell you is if you raise a good crop of soybeans 60 bushel soybeans just the grain only not even counting the stover just the grain only when those 60 bushel soybeans leave the field did you know that you have about 48 pounds of actual phosphate that leave the field and about 84 pounds of k2o potassium 84 pounds so you need a lot of fertility to raise good soybeans there are certainly a lot of considerations when you're going to continue Continue to plant the same crop every year in a field yep. and if it's soybeans you start with good variety selection and seed treatment disease control is very critical there are so many things you have to keep in mind well one thing you need to keep in mind too is how you're going to control our weed of the week we'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up next